Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 27th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. It was a beautiful sunny morning with light southerly winds and we held on to those southerly winds for the first few hours of the Hawkwatch, letting us actually set up at the North Lookout for the first time in a while. With the layer of cirrus clouds, we had some nice halos in the sky, including a parhelic circle. Exactly one month ago today, on April 27th, we had a truly spectacular display of halos, and there's a write-up of it on the website haloblog.net with my photos and videos and some expert analysis of the phenomenon, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Here's a great blue heron that was peacefully standing in the water in the early morning. It was a good morning to see migrating cedar waxwings. We had a few hundred of them in a few hours. We also had a few hundred blue jays migrating, but the numbers seem to be slowing down compared to the thousands that we have been seeing over the past several weeks. Here we have an osprey carrying a fish, and I'm sure some fishermen who watch this video can leave us a comment letting us know what kind of fish that is. It was also a good day for eastern kingbirds with more than 20 migrating in the morning. Here we have a swallow with a red cheek, a dark cap, and a white forehead. This is a cliff swallow. We seem to be at peak black pole warbler migration. We had a lot of them singing from the hedgerows. We had multiple flyovers. And then after the hawk watch at the end of the day, there were quite a few in a tree on the bluff, maybe a dozen or more. As this bird was coming in and I raised my camera, I was trying to figure out what bird has a black spot on the breast like that, and then I realized it was just a tree swallow carrying a large feather. Here's the bird that was the highlight of the morning flight. Here we have a vireo that's got a yellow wash underneath, including up onto the throat, and it also has dark lores. That's the area in front of the eyes. This was the season's first Philadelphia vireo. Here we have a raptor that's shaped like a flying cross. We see wings held out straight. We see rounded wingtips, so a hawk, not a falcon. We see a really long tail on this bird and a large head. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have another raptor with a long tail. This one's got slightly more pointed wings. This is a juvenile northern harrier. We had a really nice flight of broad-winged hawks in the morning with over 500 counted in the two hours that we were at the north lookout. In yesterday's video, I talked about how some juvenile broad-winged hawks have a more adult-like tail, and today I captured a photo that really shows what I was talking about. So here we have two juvenile broad-winged hawks. The one on the bottom has the more typical tail, which has thin tail banding that's somewhat faint and maybe a slightly bolder, dark tip to the tail. The bird on top is also a juvenile, though we see it is molting in some adult wing feathers. They're the ones with the dark tips here. We can see the inner primaries have already been replaced. But if we look at the tail, it's a much more adult-like tail. It's sort of a dark tail with a wide white band. So maybe not quite as bold as the adult tail. We do see some other white bands in it, but it's definitely much more adult-like compared to the typical tail that we see on juvenile. So that is a rare variation that you will occasionally see. From the North Lookout, we had 82 species this morning. The light southerly winds weren't enough to hold off a lake breeze, so at 11 we moved down to the South Lookout, and the rest of the day we had a light to moderate northerly wind. We started off with more sunshine, but as the day went on, a thickening cloud layer was moving in. But that doesn't mean that the hawk flight stopped. In fact, we had a really steady flight of broad-winged hawks and other raptors such as bald eagles and turkey vultures. And we had a total of more than 2,000 broad-winged hawks for the day. But unfortunately, most of them were inland, and it was pretty much just looking through the spotting scope and counting them off to the south. But it was a really big flight. It was the biggest flight we've had so far in May. Here we have an adult broad-winged hawk. You can see that bold, dark trailing edge to the wings, and also that tail I was talking about where it's sort of a dark tail with a single wide white band. And here we have a juvenile broad-winged hawk, so one that was born last year that is starting to replace its feathers to transition into adult plumage, which by the end of the summer it will look like a complete adult. But you can see which wing feathers it has already replaced. They're the ones with the darker tips that we see here in the inner primaries. And here's another one that's growing in. You can see the dark tip on the secondary that's growing in. And this bird is also replacing some tail feathers. You can see the gap giving it a split-tailed appearance. 
And in the afternoon, we were also seeing some common nighthawks fly around. Now, nighthawks are not actually hawks or raptors. They're actually in a group called the night jars, sometimes called the goat suckers, related to things like eastern whippoorwills and chuckwills widows. But the nighthawks, you'll sometimes see them them flying around in the day, but it's more common to see them at dusk. I went out a little while ago and saw about 20 of them flying over the North Lookout here at Derby Hill, but they have a pretty distinctive shape. They have very thin pointed wings, and the most distinctive plumage feature is the white patches here in the wings. From the South Lookout, we had 48 species. Altogether for the day, we had 89 species, including some brant that were migrating overnight. We have a couple additions to my year list. Last night before bed, I heard the nocturnal flight calls of both gray-cheeked thrush and least bittern, so I added those. And then today we had the Philadelphia vireo, bringing us to a total of 203 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 236 turkey vultures, 4 ospreys, 72 bald eagles, 9 northern harriers, 2 cooper's hawks, And we had 2,151 broad-winged hawks and two red-tailed hawks for a total of 2,476 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 14,249 and the season total to 92,507. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for partly cloudy skies in the morning, then becoming overcast with a high around 70 and light southerly winds. The morning will probably be better when we have that southerly wind and a little bit of sunshine. As the day goes on, it may cloud over and we may also get a lake breeze. So the morning may end up being the better time, but I would expect light to moderate migration overall. We've had some pretty big numbers the past couple days, so hopefully the good flights will continue and we haven't run out of birds yet. For Thursday, they're calling for morning rain showers and a high in the mid-60s and light south-southwest winds. So it's a good wind direction, but fairly light, and it seems like it'll be gloomy with some rain. So that'll hold back any raptor flight. Expect light migration. And for Friday, they're calling for cloudy skies with a high in the mid-to-upper 60s and westerly winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I'd expect light to moderate migration, and that might be the last good day of the season because Saturday is the last day of the count and the weather's not looking so good. All right, it may be late in the season, but we're still getting some pretty good songbird migration and raptor migration, so we can't complain about that, especially after all the rainy and cold weather that we had last week. We're coming up on the end of the count, only a few days left, with Saturday being the final day, so I hope you can come out one last time and visit us out at Derby Hill. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.